Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Happy Friday, good afternoon and welcome to Winner Home on Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Private Property. This guy over here is Danilo Acquisto. Our three competing design duos are only one challenge away from completing their lavish homes and very soon one of those homes will belong to one lucky viewer and it could be you. For our design duos, this competition is also a life-changing opportunity to boost their design careers and there are some handsome prizes to be won. The team that the judges decide produced the best design overall will win 100,000 Rand, but it doesn't just end there. The duo that's named the viewer's favorite, thanks to all of your votes online, will win another 20,000 Rand. So if the same duo is declared as the favorites by both you at home and the judges, they walk away with a generous 120,000 Rand. It's no wonder then that they have tackled their final challenge with gusto. So let's take a quick look back at what happened last week in case you missed it. Last time on Winner Home, the reality of the final challenge set in. I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad. It's our last challenge. Yeah. After this one, it's... You've been cut off! <laughs> Not so fast. First, the duos had to find out what their challenge would be. The next and final room you'll be decorating is the entertainment epicenter of your home. It is, of course, your living room. The design duos were determined to put the word live back in living room with exciting creative collaborations and dynamic designs. What are you going to do this time around inside that's going to wow the judges? Designer pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but at the halfway mark, there was still a lot of work to be done. How's it going? It's going, but there's a lot more to get going on. A lot. There's no time to relax as our design duos have to finish their final challenge in fine style. If you asked me, it would be a disaster if the design duos let time get the better of them at this end stage of the competition. So the final hours of the lounge challenge might be the most nerve-wracking and emotional time our design duos have had to endure thus far. Okay, it's the final day and right now we're trying to be finishing off everything. Everyone is running like a headless chicken because of this the last challenge. Everything needs to be on point. No, I'm very grateful of working with Ms. Hall. If I did it with someone else, it was going to be a different space. And I'm quite happy the space came out the way it came when we did it together. It's the final day and everything is in the space. We've collected most of our pieces. Actually, we shot off our armchair. Armchair, yeah, yes. that's the only thing. And then also we don't have tools to put up the TV, nor the artworks. Mm. Everyone's asking us where we got the Caesar stones. I think the other contestants are jealous because We've got a whole, mm, a whole bar with floating shells all out of Caesar stone. What's really stressing me out is that now that we've got this L-shaped Caesar stone bar, it needs pillars that are actually going to hold it up and support the structure, so that you can have your drink and say bottoms up and you're not on your yeah. bottoms are on the floor. Our paint technique has started. We're sort of happy with the two shapes that we have right now. Mm -hmm. Kind of maybe you want to keep it that way. When we visioned the paint technique on the wall, uh, we envision it with other colors. Right now we're starting to change colors because if we want it to be very strong and powerful and to blend in with everything. We're very happy with the uh, pendant lights from 28 and we chose pastel colors from Plascon to match them up to the space. And it really, they blend into the space, which is what we're very happy about. And what's nice about the pendant is that they bring in some of the colors we previously used in the other rooms. So they link the, all, like most of the spaces together. Oh, every time we deal about with lighting, I'm excited. I'm over the moon. So it's, it's our highlight. And Steven the is fact here. that it's Steven, mm -hmm. it's more of a highlight. Absolutely. Because everything is quite, it's, it's bespoke. Mm. From the kitchen to these track lights, I mean, they just, it was about hanging them at different proportions and just adding that razzle with that mirror. We believe in education and we believe in, in, in empowering people through conversations. 
and we find it quite nice to have a conversation with a glass of wine. Because everybody has that beautiful bottle of wine that they want to show off mm. and I think this is, the wine rack is definitely a lovely place to put that. And we designed that as well. It's custom. -made. It's custom made, so you won't find it anywhere, that's why it fits nicely into that space. The bar stools. Budget is tight. Ah, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> tight is an understatement. I mean, it is shoestring budget. Yeah, so we actually went to a scrapyard and found two bar stools that actually still work. Like, they still rotate. They just need to be upholstered in terms of the seating. Everyone must go to a scrapyard. The things you can find there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my word. <laughs> Uh, Paul is walking around the house and he's checking on our progress. I think he's weighing and seeing if we are ahead or behind him. But then it doesn't bother us because he's always in our house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not spying on Team House and Leisure. Well, they, they bought collaborators that I know, uh, Tatenda Chidora and also Haile. So I wanted to go and take like a a sneak peek of what they're doing. I was quite interested because of, you know what? This is the last challenge. I'm gonna take a look. But stay in your house, like, you can't come through it. And you're interrupting the flow yeah. in our space. It's not spying, it's just looking. No, it's not spying, man. Our styles are totally different. So I wouldn't say it's spying. It's like that auntie you never wanted your house. And although Mpo's visit wasn't entirely welcomed by Banele and Seppo, I'm pretty sure that you'd be welcoming everyone to take a peek if one of these houses were yours. The Winner Home Grand Prize is your choice of one of the three homes decorated by our design duos at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate. They boast luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, outstanding bathroom fittings by Gibbert and Grower, as well as premier home appliances by Grundig. It does not matter which home the lucky winner chooses because each is valued at over 3 million rand, making this the largest prize on South African television. Time is running out, however, because our grand prize competition closes at midnight this coming Sunday, the 29th of October. And if you don't know what to do by now, then you clearly have not been watching the past 14 episodes. Simply visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. This also automatically enters you into our bi-weekly giveaway where the prize currently up for grabs is a KitchenAid mixer with 10,000 Rand courtesy of Caesarstone. So one entry gives you two chances to win and this weekend is your last opportunity to enter. You can enter today, tomorrow and on Sunday to maximize your chances of winning so make sure you enter now. After the break we're going to be revealing our first lounge so get some popcorn, get voting and we'll see you after these. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon, designed for life. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon, designed for life. Welcome back to Hashtag Winner Home on Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. Now, when it comes to 5 p.m. on deadline day, this is the last face our design duos want to see entering their space as they scurry to get things done on time. After a long 14-week journey on Winner Home, for me, it's a very special moment to call Time's Up for the very last time. Not to the left, to Tenda. Bit more. Yes. Oh, well, for the neat curators they are, it's pretty messy out here. Let's start going inside. Hey, Tatenda. Hey, how's it? Good, How are you good, doing? Manila, come and join me here. What's up, Tepo? Hi, Danilo. So things seem like they're coming together nicely. Yes, we have all our pieces here. It's just now assembling them. Okay, so last time the pieces hadn't even arrived. So I'm gonna keep calm, the pieces are here. <laughs> but I don't see much up on the walls and things. Do you have all the right stuff to get this done? No. Mm, not really. <laughs> but like everything is here, we just need to get the right person to come and put everything up on the wall. Guys, my blood is here. Please Last time on. it was here. I'm gonna bring it up here if once again you guys aren't done on time, alright? We are gonna we'll be done bring on time. Sure. Cake. <laughs> I want cake, I want drinks, I want everything afterwards. I see all your friends have come out to support. The tender is here, Heidi's here. How did you guys manage to afford these guys? We actually bought them 200 at a time each. <laughs> Typical artist life, right? Yes. It's actually everybody we collaborated with, so they're here to just help us 
make sure that everything is where it needs to be. Stunning. If this is not done on time, you two. We know. Deadline's approaching, get going. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> Over at Team Habitat's house, there's a slab of Caesar stone leaving the site. And that's a bit unnerving, so close to deadline. A beer Brad. Come and join me over here, guys. Hello. Hello. Should I give you high fives, low fives? Oh. Sure, I wish I could, but I wouldn't recommend anything touching my head. Oh, wow, jeez. <laughs> yes. Okay. No, no. <laughs> well, let's start with Caesar stone for a second. I saw them arrive uh, to kind of fill in your, your, your bar, and now they've left again. Well, you know when you make a bespoke piece, sometimes you got to make it more bespoke than the original design. Okay. So they're just cutting away a certain segment. Every so millimetre counts to okay. make it fit perfectly. Absolutely. But it's fine, right? It's not going to disappear. Oh, no, it's about to get better. So, Bradley, talk me through the process now, because that deadline is here. What's going to happen and how is this going to happen on time is my big question. Sure. There's a lot of DIYing still happening outside. The Caesar Stone guys will be bring, bringing the bar in just now. So everything is en route. We're just waiting for delivery. Right. And one last question. Yes. Have you guys managed to rehearse your dance moves? Because uh, clearly there's no TV yeah. or artwork, so the dancing looks like a viable option. <laughs> and yeah, I got Beyonce on How does it go? Is it also like Latin? A little bit of samba, a rumba, yeah. Rican, Brazilian. <laughs> it's a whole show. OK, because this is clearly not going to be full. Not with the television, yeah, yeah. but okay. an art piece. You won't be able to change channels. You didn't play on <laughs> it. You won't be able to change <laughs> channels. Well, this place is a mess, all right? Then if it's not done, you want to see my lion roar? Oh my gosh, <laughs> no, no, no. Get back to so work. Can we get back to work? <laughs> <Okay, done. laughs> One, two, three, let's go. All right. Use those guns and pull. Come on. Awesome, awesome. Right here, guys, right here. Thank there you so it. much. It's a pleasure. It's not often that a presenter gets to carry some heavy things. Now, where's my money? Ah, there's your money. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can pay me by having this done on time, all right? Yeah. All right. Besides the paint on the wall, I'm not too sure what's happened since the halfway mark, guys. Well, we've been trying to concentrate on our paint technique, Danilo. We really want to get this right, and we really don't want to mess it up. Also, we have a white couch, so we don't want any paint to get on that because we've been there before. <laughs> So we're trying to learn our lesson and do things differently. Yeah, All yeah. the pieces are on site, we just need to put it together. All right. I don't think you look properly, Danilo. We have our wine rack installed, our mirrors is also installed, our paint technique is quite complete. We have our David Balam photograph signed. Don't be fooled by what's going on. Is it going to be ready on time? We definitely are on track according to the way we wanted to do things. Okay, good. Now listen, I know you guys want to start lounging around, but finish the lounge first. Deal? Yeah. Deal. Good luck. Thanks, Cheers. man. Let's get to work. Oof. And with the usual flurry of last minute work, the final challenge draws to a glorious close. Can you believe it? The 5 p.m. deadline is here for the last challenge of Winner Home 2017, and those lounges are complete. Team Habitat, Team House and Leisure and Team Vizu. Well then, to all of you guys and girls, who's going to break that three-way tie? It's all in the hands of the judges now. Working with the other contestants, it actually feels like working with family because it's been a long journey of like lots of tears and joy. We've been through the most together. <laughs> Oh, Team House and Leisure is totally right. This journey has been lots of tears, stress, joy, and plenty of laughs. It's also been so incredible to see our design duos innovate and collaborate with some of the country's top creative talents to produce those stunning living spaces. And on that very happy note, I'm sure you're eager to see those completed lounges. Team VC has done a stellar job of maintaining their concrete jungle design theme throughout their home. And the lounge is in keeping with their contemporary but relaxed living aesthetic. We have the most comfortable lounge. I'm proud to say that. I enjoy our lounge. Mm -hmm. And also, we enjoy everything in the lounge. We should be so proud of Team VC. They've worked incredibly hard to complete the final challenge on Winner Home. But the big question is, will it reflect when the judges come to visit? Hello, Mr. Bond. It's 007 to you. Do you expect me to talk? I expect you to die for this room. Ah! <laughs> Cheese balls. Well done, you guys. This looks amazing. Thank Thanks, Dan. Let's go. Walk me through the story of your lounge and how it's completed the home. We wanted to bring in calm and comfort in this room because a lounge is where you sit and relax. 
and that's why our couch is so comfy. We've also tried to bring in a lovely splash of colour, which is quite obvious in our paint technique, but also in our rug, which is quite lively and bold, and we also complemented that with the live delicious monsters. And we also just tried to create a very happy, bubbly space. Teach me a little bit here. I mean, what, what is so trendy about this space? What, what inspired you to put this lounge together? We've looked at uh, various people like Ma Esther Mashangu and also we've looked at the client that we've created. If you look at Esther Mashangu's work, it's more of painting walls with Ndebele patterns, but we wanted not to use Ndebele patterns in, on the walls. Instead, let's create something more European, but that's what, that would represent us as South Africans in terms of design, because of, that's where everyone is going. And I think me and Lesoho, we are the people that can create that type of style. Quick question. Why don't your curtains close? We ran out of budget, but in terms of the curtains, I think maybe that's what they tend to be. Like, we don't want it to be closed. This is a signature estate, Dan, so you don't need that kind of privacy that much. So having curtains was kind of like a, let's have them, but let them not close. Let them be like kind of like a style. And also, if they might not be privacy with the curtains, there might be privacy with the plants. I know you're a typical guy's guy. You like watching a bit of sport, you like playing computer games, yet there's no TV. We didn't want a TV because if we were trying to have a lifestyle of reading, sitting on a comfortable couch, having a glass of wine, that's why we have a wine rack. And what about these exposed plugs? Yes, so when you do eventually decide to get a TV, we can then add that and cover the plugs. Here's a reality check for both of you. Did you know that this is the last time we'll be standing inside your home at the final product of one of your challenges? Whoa. Crazy, right? Yeah. How do you feel? Mixed emotions, you don't know how to feel, so maybe it'll set in tomorrow. I think next time you see us, you're gonna have to give us those 100,000. <laughs> it's not up to me, it's up to the judges, ladies and gents, good luck. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks. Mixed emotions there from Les Sejo, yet Mpo is pretty confident. But the important question is, what do you think? Head over to our social media and tell us what you think of the lounges and which design duo is your favorite using that hashtag winner home. I love reading your comments every single week. Now, still ahead on the show, we take a look at the other two living rooms before those judges make their entrance. with us. This is Winner Home on Afternoon Express on SABC3. Team Habitat has a knack for cutting things fine and this final challenge is no exception with their Caesar Stone bar countertop being amended in the final hour. To quote a beer, my nerves! But this time, have they created the exceptional space that they intended? Staying true to their unconventional design style, Team Habitat's lounge has unique storage, a bar, modern and upcycled furniture, and of course, their signature Razzle Dazzle. It's a show house. We want people to walk in there and go, wow, this is amazing. Wow. You know? So, Eye of Africa is our client, and we want to wow the people that come to Eye of Africa. So that they buy. So they they buy. need to charge it. They need to charge it because we've run out of budget. Good day, sir. What can I get you to drink today? I'll have a vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. Danilo, is that Bond or Batman? Either way, I am loving that base. <laughs> <laughs> Team Habitat, this place is looking pretty interesting. I, I like all the different elements. The bar is finally in. And yes, this is just water. It's 4 p.m. It's not drink, not drink o'clock yet. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about your grand vision, time, what you guys are trying to create here. You know, we started off obviously with like a space disadvantage because we had a dining room table slap bam in the middle. So we built partitions, mirrored them to just 
optimize on the space and try and make it look bigger than what it is. And multifunctional. Yes. You know, a space that has different areas that are all different functions, like the dining room, the lounge, the bar area. You don't get the opportunity to talk to the judges when they walk into your space to have a look around. And so let's say they walked in here and said it was a bit cluttered for them. What would your response be? We've definitely edited ourselves. And it's like, if it feels like there's a lot happening, it's only because of the mirrors. They give that double time, let's do this twice, not once. But you're only actually doing it once. I also think with the the bold items, like the lighting, the table, the mirrors, all the bold items together are very powerful. And although it may seem cluttered, it's not. It's just a powerful design aesthetic. As I've seen with each of the rooms you guys have designed and decorated, you're always trying to tell a unique story. What is the story here? We love things that are special. And for me, that's the biggest thing. It's like. Everything should be somewhat unique or special. You know, you should have lighting that looks like something different. It's made from, you know, parts of a track. It's got a story behind it. The lion was, I mean, beaded. That glass table was cut. It's literally 10 millimeters thick. And like key pieces that really just make a home, I don't know, something that is something to come home to. The last challenge on Winner Home is officially over. And it's been so great journeying with both of you and your bold ideas along the way. And how are you guys feeling at this point? And what happens if we announce you as a 100,000 Rand winner? Do you think you can take it? Obviously, we do hope that the 100,000 Rand <laughs> right is what did you out. And we, we hope in the judges will appreciate our style as bringing something different. I'd even say when we entered, it was one of those. We either taking that 100,000 and it's like, yes. Or it's like whoever takes it should bring something new to the table. We're all young designers and it's about bringing new ideas to the table. But we went all in and we're hoping for the best. It's literally that. Well, in true Habitat style, I'm going to have to shut the front door one more time. Ah! <laughs> and uh, I have to hear out of here, the judges are on their way. To borrow a dance term, our design duos have left it all on the floor. Well, not literally left everything on the floor, but uh, Team House and Leisure definitely have used every last cent of their remaining budget and every last ounce of their creative energy. In their lounge, Team House and Leisure employed their boldest use of color and art yet. It features handcrafted furniture by Outlander, unique lighting and striking local art pieces. We're quite sad that this is the last challenge and like we are, at some point we are going to have to like hand over the house, walk away from it. At this, like at this stage of the competition, we're quite like attached to like the space, working on it. Oh, it is bucketing down outside. Oh, but it's nice and cozy in here. No, 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 Thank you so much, Danilo. Danilo. <laughs> With the space that's perfectly created like this one, there must have been a grand master plan. Talk us through your planning process and your designing process and your thoughts uh, before putting this together. With the lounge area, what we wanted to do is actually have something that's a statement piece. And especially since our past rooms have been very soft and very calm. And Tiana told us that he needs something that pops and not necessarily comfortable and that's what we tried to do. And also we thought of just collaborating with as many designers and artists as possible just to add a sense of uniqueness to the space. You say you wanted this lounge to pop but it mustn't be comfortable but a lounge is meant to be comfortable. It is comfortable Danilo. First of all we considered the light of the space and we went a bit colder with our colours but then how we softened the colours is with the use of the cushions and the fabrication. And if you're looking at it, it may not look comfortable, but then once you sit on it, you will, it will swallow you like a cloud, like a bed. Yes. Something that catches my eye when I walk into the space, obviously, is the colored paint. And although it looks beautiful as a showroom, I think it looks beautiful on camera. The one thing that I'm nervous about is that it will date quickly and also might be a bit distracting. The nice thing is that it is paint, so with time you can like repaint over it if you feel like you don't, it's dated, you don't like it anymore. And the other thing we tried to consider was the Amadeus we have in the kitchen, so we needed colors that would all complement each other. Of all three design duos, you guys were left with the least amount of money to complete your lounge. Did that limit your creativity? I think like not having 
a lot a lot to spend on the room it really contributed to our creativity as well because like when you when you have a lot you tend to not be as creative swipe, yes. yeah you just like swipe all the way <laughs> so like limited budget forced us to like be creative play around with color pick like furniture that could like stand out in the space speaking of your tight budget i see there's a nice art piece in the middle of the wall that's got a distressed look what is going on with your tv we needed a placeholder for a tv because when we sat here initially we felt that the space needed something like a tv and we could not afford not to have a tv so we found what we have well no more of me stressing you out i'm gonna leave that all to the judges they're on their way Okay, just between you and me, please don't admit this to anybody else, I'm really gonna miss these design duos, but I'm also just so excited that on the 10th of November, I'm going to be handing one of them a check for 100,000 Rand. Still ahead on Winner Home today, however, the judges come to critique the lounges, and our guest judge is one of the biggest names in local interior design. Who could it be? Stay right where you are. Partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. A warm welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express on this Friday afternoon. Now, Private Property has treated us to some really fantastic property advice on Afternoon Express over this fourth season of Winner Home, and today is no exception. The Western Cape has some of the most beautiful scenery in the world, and property in the province is incredibly popular. Today, we have David Brits joining us in the loft, who is going to chat to us a little bit more about the property and estate market in the Western Cape. Welcome to the loft, David. Thank you, Dan. So let's quickly understand where the property market is in the Western Cape. I've had the privilege of living there and property is so expensive. Is it still profitable? Is it still an investment? Where are we at? Yeah, then definitely Cape Town is obviously uh, ex uh, one of the most expensive metropoles in South Africa. Uh, later stats show that uh, property in Cape Town is on average 400,000 rand more expensive than any other metropole at the moment. So measuring at the price of 1.4 uh, million rand for average house, wow. right, is, uh, there's, uh, there's a difference of 400,000 rand. Uh, between between yeah. Cape Town and any and the other. And the next like, yeah. competitor. Yeah, it's a very popular area, clearly. Yeah. So yeah. what does that mean for the property market? Is it a good investment, bad investment? Yeah, well, definitely. If you go look at the latest stats on, 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 on F&B, uh, they show over the last past five years, all right, Cape Town a property uh, grow by, I think it's 53.7%, all right, over the last five years. And the closest uh, metropole is Kwazulu Natal with 30.2%. So just and under like 20% yeah, yeah. higher growth yes. in the next metropole. Yeah. And Gauteng only come in in fourth place on 24.7 percent, so that gives you that gives you a good indication where Cape Town is at yeah. the moment uh, versus the other metropoles. Yeah. Obviously, there's a huge demand because it's a small surface area, one of the most beautiful places in the world, and it's not like Cape Town can go anywhere because either you grow into the sea or you grow into Table Mountain. I was driving through Camps Bay, and I mean, you mentioned how like um, sort of dense the area is. There was a, a piece of land that was not even bigger than like sort of a hectare or 10 hectares or something that was going for a billion. South African rand from yes, the city of Cape Town. Yeah, yeah, that's five, actually five hectares that uh, the city of Cape Town sold for a billion rand. It was uh, recently in a, an article. Okay. Yes. So space is important, I think, for people, and that's maybe why um, you know people are starting to look at properties that are expanding outside of just the Cape Town um, sort of city bowl area. Yeah, no, definitely. If you look at the uh, northern suburbs, especially you look at Val de Vie, I think Val de Vie, in my opinion, is one of the best estates in South Africa. Then you get uh, Anna Clara Fontaine recently launched by Rabi, also a very mm -hmm. very nice estate. And then you get your middle class, I would say your middle upmarket class estates like the Satari mm -hmm. Country Estate uh, on your way to, to Somerset West. Acorn Creek, for instance, recently, recently launched by MSP. 
And then, uh, yeah, then you get your estates that cater for your first time home buyers, mm -hmm. as well as your young and upcoming professionals. Yeah. Buy, and there you will look at your Burgundy Estates, for instance. I think Burgundy Estate was launched in 2006, and Burain Estate launched in the, to the towards the end of 2010. Obviously, that is also doing very well. It's yeah. also very, very uh, attractive to investors, all right, yeah. because of your, or your ROI, the return on investment you get there. It is, it is, it's, I can't tell you the type of uh, mm. growth they will get there, the demand for rent is, is, yeah. is very so if, you, if you're serious about looking at the property market, and particularly in the Western Cape, you should be serious about looking into estates. And a lot of them are moving towards the Cape Winelands areas, first of all, because they're just incredibly stunning. And I think people are realizing, I'd rather drive a little bit further into work in town if I need to, as long as I can come home to a beautiful view in the afternoon and the evening to, to enjoy yeah. that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think the people is, uh, the new trend in lifestyle estate is, is, is that typical work lift play type of thing yes. and then they, they after the, the lifestyle. But I think the biggest driver behind all these estates is security. Mm. All right, we all know we are in South Africa, uh, so security is key for you and your family. As you drive further afield, I mean, you get to the beautiful garden route, Neisner, Mossel Bay, and everyone seems to be buying into that relaxed lifestyle out there. Yeah, then I think uh, Mossel Bay and George has always been a, a very popular holiday destination, especially for the Farleys or the people up north. <laughs> so yeah, they, they like to invest in the, the uh, estates like Fancourt. Fancourt recently came second in the top 10 golf uh, golf estate uh, competition, South Africa, for, followed by uh, Pinnacle Point that came in at fifth prize, and then you get the, the Zulas, right? Some molas there. So there's a, yes, there's a there's a couple of nice estates in that in that area, and definitely a very very high in demand area is George and and, and obviously nice now. So yeah. the Western Cape property market is doing well. Put your money into it, but put it into estates because that's going to continue definitely. to expand and grow. Definitely, yes. David, thank you. Thank you. Well, there you have it, the lowdown on what's happening in the property market in the Western Cape. Now, don't forget to enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition on private property to stand a chance to win your choice of the three multi-million rand homes as completed by our design duos on the Eye of Africa estate in Johannesburg. Now, this weekend is your last chance to enter as the competition closes at midnight this coming Sunday, the 29th of October. So don't wait another minute. Log on to private property .co.za, answer an easy question and then vote for your favorite design duo. It's as easy as that. And you could be the lucky viewer who wins their own dream home. Now coming up after the break, the judges take a look around those lounges and make their final verdict. Welcome back. This is Winner Home One Afternoon Express exclusively on SABC3. Now, as you know, this is our final challenge. Can you believe it? Uh, you're probably wondering what will happen next. As with any new home, our duos have an opportunity to do what's called snagging. Now, this is when any defective work can be corrected and changes can be made before the home is officially handed over to its new owners. So we'll be doing exactly the same thing here on Winner Home. Next week, our design duos can make alterations and final tweaks to their previous design designs and a little birdie told me that some of them have got a little bit more planned than just some tweaks here and there. Then on Friday the 10th of November it's our live finale where we'll crown our new design champions and we'll also find out which lucky winner gets to choose one of those three homes as their very own. It could be you if you enter now. So don't forget you have only until midnight on the 29th of October, that's this coming Sunday by the way, to enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition and you can do that by visiting private privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo there. This challenge isn't yet done though. It's time for our judges to inspect those three homes and let's hope that their advice comes raining down on our design duos. Seven challenges in and even Mother Nature is shedding a tear as Winner Home draws to a close. Contestants, for the last time, the judges are here. Our judges are Season 1 winner Donald Mumalo, Plascon's Katlejo Kondlo, and a renowned guest judge who has designed some of Africa's finest homes. I'm Stephen Pellerade. I'm CEO of Pellerade Design. 
Uh, we specialize in high-end residential projects throughout Africa and in Europe as well. My design journey started really weird. I studied to be a chartered accountant and during my articles I went to buy a car and saw a, a house being sold, an auction at the time. So I, I sort of bought the house, it was a small little cottage, and then renovated it. And uh, So by the time I'd finished my articles I was already on house number two or house number three and I had the bug. I was in love with property and the design because obviously if you stage something well it's got more appeal and uh, you can sell it quickly. One of the biggest trends in the market at the moment is integrated living and it's something I would look for as a judge. So we don't have compartmentalized dining and living experience anymore. It's more open plan. The trick is to segmentalize those areas that they live well together as well as create something that's an aha lifestyle moment when you arrive at the house. It is raining and it's not raining men. It is raining judgment. Donald, Catejo and Stephen. Judgment day is here. <laughs> <laughs> my nerves, my nerves! Steven Pulleria is a big name, and with him being a guest judge, yeah, I was starting to... Panic a little bit. Yeah. We actually a bit nervous, especially regarding our colors, that Katlejo might not be happy. And also with Steven Pellerade, we're excited that he's here and we've seen his work, which is like grand projects, and we're hoping he'll appreciate our little gem. To kick off their reign of judgment, the judges' first stop is Team Habitat's lounge, which could cause division of opinion with some unique design choices. I get a feeling that the judges feel that we are designing the house for ourselves. And we are not. Yes. And that's what I, I worry about. That's a, that would disappoint me and break my heart. We're not designing the house for ourselves. It's for Eye of Africa, and it's a show house that's supposed to be spectacular. I think the biggest thing here is that I'm not finding it inviting. So I'm sitting on the edge of this, what appears to be a dining room chair, so it's not very comfortable, but there's just too many scatters, and you know what, I need to get rid of at least one. Ooh. Thank you, much better. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It's cramped, not enough space. I think the pillars are quite distracting. However, I do like the lights. If your visitors were here to look up. I'm just sad, I'm really sad. It feels like deja vu to me, like that first judging that we did, where we begged these guys to edit, and I feel they went right back to where they started. My back is hurting, Don Oak. Absolutely. Pitch these. <laughs> the lighting is actually quite stunning, but the rest is. It feels like objects are just put together, not really thought through properly. Like you said, there is absolutely no comfort in this space. If I had to pick one word, it looks cluttered. I think they tried to demarcate their areas, um, but not cleverly. It's not inviting in, in, in any way to me. I can't walk in here. I actually I have to find my way around it and be careful that I don't bump into anything. Practically, the space does not work. The sofa is a little bit too small for that space, considering that there's so many entertainment spaces, that that's, that lounge really doesn't accommodate all those people which I envision to be in that house. It's got really dynamic feel as you're in here. Uh, they've got wonderful elements that uh, are wow elements, which you need. I think they've gone too much with wow here, but it, it, it really is, it's quirky. Uh, so you smile, may not be that practical though. The coffee table for me is a stunning execution. However, in that space, I don't know if it works well, but the piece on its own is actually quite a lovely piece that I could see in a minimalist space where you just add a pop of something unique. For me, the scatter cushions are the least of my worries in this room. I think the biggest constraint is really the space planning. It's not for adults. You know me and mirrors, right? I love mirrors. Let's not go there. But this execution of mirrors was mirrorlicious. Like, literally, mirrors everywhere. Like, even if you had the biggest ego in the world, those mirrors would be too overwhelming. I mean, you look up, there's mirrors. You look to the side, there's mirrors. Just, oh, and I'm so angry at them. I'm really, really upset because I was rooting for them. I could cry. Hoping to save our judges from tears is Team VC believing wholeheartedly in their carefully thought out living room design. I think Katleho is going to love the paint technique. Uh, she's going to love the wine rack. She's going to love our chair. 
that we got from Reach End. Everyone has to love it. That chair is so comfortable. Ah. <sighs> right now, <laughs> yeah, wasn't certain how to get into the sofa. Spinning. <laughs> exactly. Oh, it sure is bright. Is it bright? I love the palette that they've created here. Um, I love the rich colors that they've used. They were quite brave in terms of using color and it ties in beautifully to the orange scatter cushions. And I feel a sense of direction throughout their home. I like the fact that they've kept it open plan. So yes. it, feels, um, it feels larger and you can breathe. Uh, I think their, their sense of color is good. The problem is, is they've dissected the colors. So you have your feature wall where you go to watch TV and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six different colors. And a pink doesn't lend itself to this wonderful burned orange. So when you're sitting here, it's, it's like you have this strange Picasso in front of you of colors. Whereas they could have been just as bold using one or two in, in the space that's here. I'm a bit confused about the room. I think because it sits next to the winning kitchen of the season, that I would have totally loved to see the monochromatic feel come through to the side. This sort of makes the rooms disjointed and basically feels like two separate houses. What I do like about the space is that it is positive and the couch is incredibly comfortable, but I do think that we should have uh, continued with the theme from the kitchen. They have utilized this space well. They've kept it light. They have really gone for no clutter. I think that's really sort of accented in, in their choice of furnishings. They've got a very bold item, the sofa, which is the first thing that actually draws your attention as you walk in. For me, they've managed to create a sense of space and there's an air, there's a freedom in their space. So it feels like a place that one can actually live in. What I like about the space is that it feels very positive. It's quite a neutral space because of that big couch and the paint technique really does wonders for that room. It really makes it more alive and engaging. The fact that there's a rug that also echoes the theme of the urban jungle in that space is really well executed. I think my favorite uh, aspect of the room is not the large sofa, but funny enough, is the mid-century swivel chair. It's comfortable, it's warm, and they, they'd obviously brought a nice lifestyle aspect in. I have trouble with the fact that there is no dining area. There is outside, however, knowing the weather that we've got, we've got extremes where it's exceptionally cold. So in winter periods, I'm not sure how that would work out in terms of a dining space. The curtains are absolutely shocking. They went for very low quality. Their mock curtains, which has just accentuated the very insignificant look when they've gone for quite a bold look with everything else. The wine rack for me feels a bit gimmicky. I think that that space could have been used for something else. I think uh, a nice study nook would have worked better in that space. For me, it's a waste of space. Something our final duo didn't waste was their small budget and called in favors to create an artistic space to lounge in. I'm hoping that they're liking like, our bold usage of color. We're also hoping that they appreciate our choices in the artworks because you won't find it anywhere else. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Katleko, you must be happy. This is a great use of color. I think this is superb and really, really bold. This team has been very good that they've picked a design aesthetic and they've chosen mid-century and they've done it really, really well. No, absolutely. I'm doing, literally, I'm doing a happy dance. Hey, like, honestly, ordinarily, individuals would feel very anxious about using such bold colors, but how they've used it, how they've curated it, it's just incredibly gorgeous. I wasn't crazy about them Amadeus in the kitchen challenge, but now with everything completed, I understand the story. The story has now been completed and it reads beautifully. I'm in agreement with the both of you. I think this room is really well executed. The fact that the colors are so bright but also enveloping us, it just gives us such a warm feeling. I love the fact that international trends and local art exist side by side and that gives this room so much character. There's so much in this room. It feels like a smarty box and what a lot they got. That space is just incredibly beautiful and not because I'm a pain girl but honestly speaking it is just it's it's a warm space that pulls you in 
I'm immediately enveloped by these beautiful rich colors which don't make me feel at all claustrophobic. Art is quite subjective so I have to be careful when I say that the, the piece that I least like is the, the sculpture in the, the wall recess. I feel that it's, it's not relevant. I don't think it uh, adds any value to, to the lounge and the look. What I don't like about this room, I think that the couch should have been a little bit more comfortable, a little bit bigger, just so that we make the space feel more grounded and more comfortable. What's going on with this TV? I mean, it's a beautiful space, and then there's this TV that is broken. Mm, guys. Using the TV, I think, was quite a clever point. They pulled the resources they needed to, to get it there, to basically show how this thing would work and roll out. And I think that was clever. I would have done the same. The lounge and the kitchen are now perfectly blended. I mean, I didn't understand that yellow color, but now I can see where they were coming from. And yeah, well, you know, they've convinced me. For the most part, the judges seem to be in agreement on what they like and don't like about the different living rooms. Do you agree with their opinions is the big question. Hashtag win a home. The judges' decision on who wins this challenge will settle a score that's been building throughout the competition. Each one of our design duos have won two challenges thus far. So, who'll have the edge going into the final judging? This is gonna break the three-way tie, so I'm personally really, really shaking on the inside. Oh, but I'm trying to keep myself together so that it doesn't show on the outside. If we don't take it. <laughs> it's a disaster. Welcome, welcome, contestants. This is it. The final challenge on Winner Home is complete. Let's begin with our judges' feedback, and I'll start with you, Team Habitat, with that grass around your neck. The judges, as they walked through your home, said it had a wow factor. In fact, so much of wow. You utilized every centimeter of space in your lounge. However, they did feel you lacked your tasteful editing that you employed in your previous challenges. Team House and Leisure. Really? A fake television? But the judges did love your perfectly curated designer pieces. And your wall color took their breath away. Team VC. The judges felt that the flow from your kitchen into your lounge could have been done better, and they weren't too happy with the space you created by your wine rack. However, the paint technique you used, spot on. And your choice of furniture was to die for. There can, however, only be one winner. The winners of the Lounge Challenge are... I'll give it to Danilo. He knows how to make a girl's heart rate pounce like Nala. A true Italian. <laughs> Without any further ado, the Lounge Challenge winners are... Team House and Leisure. Finally. Yes, I, I can't believe it. It's, it's, yeah, it was a surprise to me. It was a surprise to me too. Like, we are so excited. Very proud of House and Leisure. Uh, they did like a nice space. But, there's a but. But, but. I don't like that table. Mm, the table was fine. But, I'm not going to be the judge. So. Let the judges choose whoever they want. <laughs> it's their choice. I love the way they played with the colour, you know, and so I would have also given it to them because they need a break so that they can, you know, get their confidence back. We're quite happy going into the final verdict with three wins and, well, it does mean that we are doing something right. Wow, so there you have it, seven challenges down and with Team House and Leisure getting the nod from the judges for their lounge, this means that they scooped up three challenges with the other teams winning two each. This, however, does not mean that Tsepo and Banele are the overall winners, people. With the challenges over, the judges now have to come together and decide which team wins the title of Best Design Duo. And to do that, they have to get a real sense of what it would feel like to live in the completed homes so next week, the judges will be spending a night inside the houses to reach their final verdict. I'll also be announcing the winners of our bi-weekly giveaway. So from me, Danilo Cristo, on this Friday, have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. 
Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.